This is the Power Producers Podcast, where we are refining and redefining the sales game. Rule number one is you have to believe in yourself. You're the only one who doesn't think you belong in this appointment. The prospect has already validated your existence by scheduling time with you. Get it through your head you belong here, go in there, crush it, and close the deal. A place where sales professionals can come to learn from other sales professionals and thought leaders that have mastered their craft. The difference between a good salesperson and a best-in-class salesperson is only two minutes. By spending an extra two minutes on what you might think is a mundane task in the sales game, you separate yourselves from the pack, you grow your book of business, you close more deals, and you retain your accounts. As well as their peers who are still striving for perfection to achieve their why. I have a wife and four kids. Failure is not an option. Real sales professionals. Real stories. Real results. Are you ready to feel the power? Love it. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Power Producers Podcast, where we are refining and redefining the sales game. And today, we have a killer guest from outside the industry, Mr. Stuart Leo with Waymaker.io. And we're going to talk a lot about processes and process gap and profitability and anything else that starts with P. But before we do that... I want to have Stuart give us sort of the 10,000-foot overview of who he is and where he came from and how he got to where he is with Waymaker right now. And then, Stuart, we're going to dive in and just pepper you with questions about everything that you're doing so that we can make sure that everybody knows everything possible about Waymaker before we get out of here. Gents, it's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you for having me. Uh, Thanks for the intro. Yeah, I I found founded Waymaker.io, and I'll lead the team here. Waymaker.io is a platform. It's an intelligent platform that helps you uh, build a better business. It's uh, really, it diagnoses your business. It surfaces growth gaps where you can improve through the skills and the systems. And then it helps you turn those into strategic goals to build out your business plan and your strategic roadmap. And then you can track those goals with yourself and across your team. Uh, That's it in a nutshell. But actually the, the big idea behind Waymaker is this technique we uh, discovered, uh, which really we rediscovered out of the military, which is a technique called the seven questions, which we've adapted into uh, the business world, which helps you find the highest value course of action to reach mission objective. And, uh, and that process um, is quite a unique process and it's transformative, it's agile, it's fast, it's high powered, and it, and it gets results every single time. So do you, do so you have a military you, background or, or like where did yeah, that that's come not, from? That's exactly where I was going to ask. Same thing I was going to ask. No, just, just a curious mind. And okay. uh, <laughs> um, I tip my hat uh, to anybody serving in the military, have uh, friends and yeah. family there. Uh, and, and I thank them for their service. Uh, it was actually an article I was reading coming out of corporate life about 10 or 15 years ago. And, and, and I love corporate life. I had some of my best and my worst times there. Um, but one of the great things about corporate life is the, the bureaucracy. And, uh, uh, and, you know, that can kind of get you down sometimes. So I was, coming, I was coming out of a bureaucratic world, really frustrated, and uh, starting my, my coaching consulting business. Um, this is a long time ago now. And I read an article about the British military. Uh, and, and in fact, we could talk about the British and the US, um, uh, but this, this one's about the British. Uh, and, and about That's where how it all started for us, Stuart. I mean, I, you know, <laughs> the British and the U.S. is kind of where things started for us. That, that's right. And hey, I'm Australian, so uh, we have a love hate relationship with our yeah. with our colonial masters. Um, there you go. <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I should stop there. Um, now nah, you're good. <laughs> and, you're in a safe zone today, Stuart. You're yeah. in a safe place. You can say uh, whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> it's always dangerous when somebody with a microphone says you're in a safe place. You can say what you like. <laughs> Fair. Um, <laughs> uh, and, and so the, the, the British military, when they were kind of moving from the 20th century to the 21st century, they had this really stuffy, um, bloated, strategic decision-making and planning process that they, they were still using from, from 100 plus years of traditional warfare. But warfare was changing and changing rapidly. It was, it was moving from 
you know, uh, it, was, it was the next wave of change where it was becoming very agile, uh, non-traditional. Uh, at that time, the focus was moving from, from Cold War to a hot war in the Middle East. And, it, and everything that was traditional was being broken apart by non-traditional. It was agile. It was, I mean, the enemy at the time wasn't even enemy of state. Uh, it was ideological. And, and so their decision-making processes just didn't work. They, they, they took too long. And the way they solved it was that they developed a small set of questions uh, that if you asked and answered on the battlefield would develop the highest value course of action. And, and that replaced the really stuffy, complicated battle planning, combat estimate process that you did on the field. And it was transformative. It, it, uh, it changed the way teams worked. And, and it did three big things in particular. One, it created a very agile and adaptive fighting force. And, and that, that was um, driven by the fact that you could ask and answer these questions, just seven questions, you know, in 30 minutes, hunkered down behind some Humvees in the desert, taking fire, um, or over three, four, five days back at HQ, developing a really good strategy. Second thing, it, uh, it flattened the organization. If you're a general or if you're a corporal, you were asking the same seven questions. You know, you had this language that just people were using. And thirdly, it decentralized, it pushed decision-making power down to the people that were closest to the problem, which meant you got a better action, better reaction, uh, better decisions, and problems were solved on the battlefield. A massively transformative. And if, if still today you end up in the British military and you get trained as an officer, you're going to learn seven questions. Now, when I read this article, I thought, I thought wow, if a stuffy you know, thousand year old organization like the British military can actually transform itself, then why the heck can't a business? And how do you take that kind of strategic mindset and tool and bring it across in, into business? And, and that's pretty much where the insight from the military stopped. Because if you, if you read their, their process, their questions, they're all about, it's a battlefield. It's designed to go and find somebody, kill them, blow something up, you know, and that's it's, you know, sometimes we want to do that in business, but it's not the it's not the best way to run a business. You you actually want to build something up. You want to build people. You want to build systems. You tend to not want to blow things up. So strangely, for about the next six or seven years, I set about just trying to write five or six or seven questions. Uh, hmm. That if you if you did it in the business world, what would that look like? And uh, and we were testing that on clients and rolling it out with publicly list organizations and privates and startups and and to be honest we developed a set of questions that if you ask and answer um, help you develop that situational awareness across your business and across the marketplace and then focus in on the highest value course of action and then just like the military when they're doing that you know hunkered down behind some humvees in the desert they're not just asking those questions and answering them they've got some software in their hands because we're in a digital world They've got some cool tech that helps you ask and answer those questions faster, easier, better with cool data. And so we went out and went, okay, let's build that. You know, how do you, how do you be that that special forces guy on the battlefield in your business and, and in your boardroom with that data to actually go and find the gaps, execute the change, rinse and repeat, do it all again, train the next round of leaders and win. Does that make sense? It does. Absolutely. So, I'm dying to know, where did the name Waymaker come from? <laughs> yeah, fair question. Um, it's, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, we help people make a way forward. Uh, the big problem we, we solve is that if you're stuck spinning your wheels or trapped in your business, uh, then our insights and our method get you unstuck. They find the next breakthrough. So, we make, help you make a way. Uh, hence Waymaker. And as we kind of played around with that, that term, we, re we learned something. Um, uh, again, it was the British here. I don't know why I keep referring to the British, but um, <laughs> we we'll make some fun of them later. Uh, Those we, guys are the worst. Oh, <laughs> they're, my, they're my customers too. I can't say that. Uh, <laughs> with Dad Tangers and Mash anyhow. Um, uh, at least, hey, hey, listen, if you want a pint of beer. You, that's right. That's, that's right. great beer. And and you inherited Prince Harry. Come on, you're <laughs> you're almost colonialized now. Um, right. No, no, I I I, 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 well, it's our motherland. But um, so what was I saying? So the uh, I don't know. 
the, the name. And, and actually, in the 16th century, get this, um, uh, as, as England is evolving and creating and you've got cities and towns, this is kind of Robin Hood era, um, although Robin Hood is a fictional character. Uh, there was a... Is he? A, uh, is he? Is he? That's, <laughs> that's a good question. Is he? <laughs> I feel like this podcast is going to go in some dangerous directions. Um, totally okay. <laughs> uh, at, in, in the 16th century, a way maker was a guy that the court, the, the, the royal court sent out to clear the roadways and make sure the roadways were safe. Um, so that trade could happen between cities and towns. And, and so, you know, in some kind of way, a waymaker is a dude that goes out there and, you know, pushes back the thieves and makes sure the road's safe and um, helps people trade. So, yeah, how has there not been a Mel Gibson or Liam Neeson movie called <laughs> The Waymaker? <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like Liam Neeson would just absolutely just, he would make destroy so many ways. it. Uh, you know have what? A particular set of skills. <laughs> <laughs> the the rights right now have just been created for that. That's, yeah, exactly. uh, <laughs> screw the software. I, let's look, just go make. Yeah, a I was going to say, man, <laughs> Stuart, let's take this thing and run with it. We, you know, let's get e- let's get Liam on the phone. <laughs> um, so yeah, hey, that's uh, that's Waymaker, uh, and and look, it it covers a whole bunch of areas, including sales and marketing service, and gets into all the skills and systems you need to build from kind of first idea in your business to market leadership. Cool deal. So what are the types of organizations that benefit? And I mean, I'm sure that anybody can benefit from your software, but all of us have an ideal prospect, a real sweet spot that we're looking to get in front of. Who's Waymaker really for that gets the most out of it? Yeah, the, the, the sweet spot is the, um, the five or 10 through to the two or 300. So we'd call that small business and small mm. to medium enterprise. So uh, if you're in a team uh, and, and you're just kind of growing that team as, as you know, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, fantastic. Uh, that's a great time to start because you're going to learn a methodology that every quarter you come in, you ask and answer the seven questions, the software is continually building a data set on how your business is growing um, right through to that couple of hundred. <coughs> uh, the, the thing that um, a business really gets um, when they use Waymaker is a way of creating the, of building the clarity and creating the alignment so that results can just happen. And, and uh, I, I love... Uh, I, I love the old, I think it's um, Jason Jordan. He wrote that book, Cracking the Sales Management Code. Um, uh, I don't know if you've read it a couple of years ago. I heard him speak in San Fran once. And, uh, and, he, and he has this great saying that results are not something that you control. They're something that happened to you. Um, and, and if you want to influence them, then you've actually got to design the daily habits and agree the outcomes, the objectives, the goals that you're going to strive towards and get yourself in a position where the results just happen for you and uh and that's kind of a little bit of the idea sitting behind that process so like you know you talked a little bit about size of business would this be organizations that are maybe maybe struggling um with a certain aspect of their sales game or looking to take it okay we've had uh, a certain amount of growth for x you know period we're looking to take it to the next level we want to implement this like Talk, talk a little bit about that aspect of it. Yeah, we talk about three common problems that every organization will go through and have at some point. The first one is um, they're spinning their wheels. Uh, mm-hmm. We're doing lots of stuff. We're, we're really busy. Everybody's off there doing their thing, but actually you're not effective. You know, if there's 10 people in the room, you're all trying to do 50 things and probably they're all 50 different things. And so the spinning wheel problem is a huge problem. Everybody thinks that I've got to hustle, got to hustle, got to hustle. Actually, no, you've got to focus. You've actually got to do one or two or three things remarkably well, and then you've got to let go of everything else. And and when you realize that, you have this kind of mindset shift that propels you into this place where you can actually achieve more while doing less. And 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 that's <laughs> that's uh, you know, I'm a I'm a typical male. Um, 
my wife often says to me, stop doing everything and just do one thing and get that damn kitchen cleaned up. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a typical thing we, we hold. But yeah, so number one, the spinning wheels. Number two, um, if you've hit a roadblock or a ceiling in your business, it's like, we've, hey, we've had a little bit of success. We might be a few years old. Suddenly we've hit this ceiling and, and it's like, um, how the heck do we break through the ceiling? We're, we're trying this, we're trying that. And we just, we've just plateaued. We just can't seem to find that next thing. And that's, that would be the most common thing we mm-hmm. see. And then the third is actually we've, we've built a bit of a good business, but I'm the founder, I'm the owner, I'm still the, the, the general manager and, and the guy driving everything. And I've gone from having this good business that I was building to now being trapped. How the heck do I get out of it? How do I actually exit my own business and get out of me, uh, so to speak, the all the things that need to go into my team so that they know how to run it sustainably? And so we meet a lot of people that are really frustrated because they're like, well, I'm sitting on this million dollar business, but how do I get out of it and reap the benefits? Uh, you know, that, and that's, that's lifestyle benefits. And how do I get paid while I sit on the beach? How do I be an owner? not a manager and so the methodology really hits those three problems that every business has at some point spinning your wheels hit the ceiling and and got those roadblocks or number one i'm now trapped um, in my own success does that make sense yep it does it does so i'm going to ask a question that might be perceived as stupid but it's going to be basically lobbing you up a huge softball you know, you've danced around the seven questions. I'm pretty sure I can Google them and find them in some way, shape, or form. So if somebody's able to do that, what's the, what's the magic of the software? Yeah, okay. So the seven questions. Um, our and you seven don't need quest- to answer them, man. I was, I was just poking fun at you. But I mean, in, in all seriousness, <laughs> yeah. you know, it, 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 it's, it's something that's, that's known. It's something that's probably available to find on the internet when it comes to you know what are they i'm just so what's the software do yeah let me tell you why do people need the software man and i know why they need the software because they're freaking people and they're not going to even google let alone implement the seven questions and the software will do it for them but i'm interested in hearing a little bit more about that so we we the 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 seven questions you can go and download from our website you know just go to waymaker.io um You'll see it under the learn tab. You can get the seven questions. That's free. Um, and look, you can go a long way just sitting in a boardroom asking and answering the seven questions. Great, fantastic. What does the software do? Uh, if you're a, a business coach or consultant and you're working with a client, typically you're going to get. They're going to say, "Hey, what's wrong with our business?" And the, and you're going to start doing this dance of discovery. And you're going to walk in and you're going to go. Okay, great. Let me ask you some questions. Four hours later, you're going to be, you know, end of a workshop. You might then go and meet with a few other team members one-on-one. Typically, you're going to spend 10 to 20 hours and a whole bunch of time, money, effort trying to understand where the gaps are, what's going on in the business. We built a diagnostic tool that uh, all you've got to do is release that to the leadership team or the participants in the business, 5, 10, 15, 20 people, between 5, 15 minutes of their diagnostic, they will have gone through a kind of a 360 review of the business. And then we take that data and we mush it back uh, through our algorithm. And in real time, we'll start to show you exactly where you sit on a growth curve and across the areas of vision, market strategy, business model, sales, marketing, service, employee experience. Uh, We'll show you across about 250 to 300 data points in skills and systems, where you mature, where you're not, and what the most important skills and systems are to build next. And that's what the software does. So we do in in like a few minutes uh, and in real time with multiple people, anywhere from more than two to a thousand plus, uh, what a, a coach or a consultant would take three or four weeks and thousands of dollars to surface. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. That's powerful. The, 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 because literally you can go, I'm frustrated, I've got a problem. And by you know, your next cup of coffee, 
you're actually looking at answers and and that's that's and and your team could be spread out anywhere across the world you don't have to fly them in from a strategic planning session you don't have to like you have to have to do anything you just got to say you just got to log on put your team into waymaker and release it and then you'll literally watch the data unfold in front of you and uh and you'll see it all appear and you can navigate through that and then then answer the seven questions the the cool thing about the diagnostic is it's not a one-off you know most of the time you take these business diagnostics or a, or a personality quiz or something it's like oh that's nice you know in in 2017 this is what it said but the way waymaker works is every quarter that reruns automatically and if you're if you're a user in waymaker working on the business remember waymaker is strategy software not productivity software it's where you work on the business not in the business and so every quarter that diagnostic reruns um and and as it reruns it, it, it adds to your data set and we're building this longitudinal picture of your business over time that you can see where you're improving where you're not you can actually um drill that down into teams or users or um, sections of your business and you'll start to actually build this picture of how your business is operating over time not just at a moment in time so the, the first and most important thing in a few minutes <laughs> you'll know how how and where to grow your business um, uh, and you get that every single quarter so every single quarter you come in you ask and answer the seven questions uh, you get back into it and you start uh, achieving more while doing less did that answer your question david it did. It did. Awesome. Awesome. What's been the... Kyle, um, what else? Yeah. I was, I was well, say, I was, what else do you got? I was going to say, what, what's what been the, the biggest challenge or, or problem that you've run into as you've been, um, you know, trying to implement these seven questions with, with businesses? Is, like, is everybody really receptive to it? Is it, um, is, it some, is it pushback that you get from them? Like, what would you say? Yeah, that, that's a really good question uh, because most people uh, most people want to get in and have a loud voice in in, in in a strategy session. You know, it's um think about the last time you got together and you got in a room with your team and you started to work on the business. Um, uh, the the challenge is people learning a skill. You know, it's it's a method. It's a reason why officers in the military go to officer training. Um, they actually learn how to, to ask and answer and be strategic together. And actually, business school doesn't teach you that. Business school teaches you how to use spreadsheets and PowerPoint decks and you know, a whole bunch of boring stuff. No, nothing hmm. against business school. Um, but uh, very rarely does a team in business actually step back and go, okay, what's... How do we play together? How do we win together? You know, if you're if you're a, um, all right, what's 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 the local uh, football team? American football. Oh, Bucks, come baby. On. The Tampa Bay Bucks, one, we world call, champions. We call yeah, we call football like actual football soccer. over here in the United States. We're not you know playing around, booting a little soccer ball around the field. <laughs> Although I mean, I mean it's <laughs> like honestly, flopping on I, the ground if the wind blows the wrong way, crying. <laughs> I, look, I, I agree with that I, I aspect, that, but like I say the tongue name. In cheek, but I've got to tell you, the soccer guys have got to be some of the best athletes that are out no, there. Yeah. That field is like what twice the size of a football field, it's and massive. they're all over. It's it's at least one and a half times. Yeah, yeah. And I was actually I mean, referring to your football, you know, American, American football. football. Well, I, I, football. I do yeah. agree, though, with the sentiment that the names like where did the name soccer come from like football is a much more appropriate term soccer. for the game of soccer uh, i'm 100 like, with you on that yeah what's the like point? i, I yeah. do agree with that but um, yeah yeah anyways yeah, yeah. Anyway, tampa bay so, bucks baby world champs ta Tom bucks, yeah. there you go yeah. champions fantastic uh so um you know, <laughs> and he's come out of retirement what's going on there you retire awesome. top of the world and then you come back it's like amazing. fantastic news so <laughs> so if you're in that team, you know, if you look at the amount of time that the coach actually spends developing the plays, learning the plays, so that when you get out onto the field, you know how to make a play. You, you've got your defensive plays, you've got your offensive plays, you know the language of strategy. 
and and American football actually is really strategic. I I'll, mm. I really don't understand it very well, but I love watching it uh, for that reason. And it's like me and hockey. <laughs> <laughs> so as a business, they never do that. Yeah, they never do that. It's a skill that you you know almost no business actually steps back and goes, how do we work on our plays to win? They, they never step back and run those scenarios and spend the time doing that because you're always doing, you're always doing. And so the hardest thing um, to shift the mindset in any business is to go, my goodness, like look at the percentage of time you spend working out how to win and the percentage of time you spend trying to win. And if you just rebalance that, that one thing alone, then you will achieve massive transformation. Because if you were a football team and you had those ratios, you would lose on the field every single time you walked out onto it. And, and that perhaps is why you're losing in business or frustrated or stuck. Uh, you got to step back and you got to start doing some thinking, some strategy, and you got to learn how to win. And once you learn how to win, you just got to learn how to win better. True. My takeaway so far is Stuart loves football hates business school undecided on Brits <laughs> uh, I, I love Brits um, I uh, <laughs> I love football <laughs> and yeah I could take or leave business school but <laughs> I'm not an academic um, but uh, but uh, so the and, and that skill is you know that's really a leadership skill if, if you you know if you're running a sales team let's say you're running a sales team um, and uh, and you're like why the heck isn't my sales team operating effectively uh, then our sales leadership curve which has about 30 35 skills and systems that if you get to maturity every market leader has uh, is going to surface which skills which systems you need to work on next to build your team not how to make the next sale that that's kind of that kind of comes next that's kind of like saying all i want to do is learn how to kick the ball between the posts or get a touchdown no 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 no. you've actually got to step back and go how do i get the ball to the guy who can cross the line to get the touchdown uh and and so we work on the strategic nature of the business good deal I've stunned you. So what do you it's stunned silence. No, no, I'm just trying to think because, I mean, really what you do is is pretty self-explanatory, honestly, when you set the table as well as you've done. I'm just – I'm kind of interested in other applications or thoughts of where you may go in the future with this or how mm. how it may morph into other things. I mean, I'm always – I'm kind of entrepreneurial and trying to think through stuff like that. The There's a, there's a – what we'd call a light – AI unfolding behind what we're doing and and so uh, it's always dangerous when I talk about what we're going to do in the future because it may never happen <laughs> or it may uh, so I've got to, I've got to catch it in that light same but, well, you're, but, you're good man I speak your language <laughs> we uh, we're actively working at the moment on uh, on new things in that space but where do we want to get where do we see the future if you're a business and if you're stuck, you're going to go and hire a business coach or consultant. That's fantastic. We love coaches and consultants that, you know, we work with them. Uh, Waymaker, we want ultimately to be like the, the Alexa or the Siri of your business. There's another mind that's constantly at work, reading your data, thinking about your business, potentially asking questions of people 24-7, and surfacing up insights in either A, the strategic inputs, or B, the things you've got to close to get to where you say you want to get to. And so hmm. it's, it, you know, our vision, our vision for Waymaker is to be a strategic command center uh, uh, because businesses really don't have them. And, uh, and, and that's something we learned from the American military, uh, which I can tell you that story. Um, and, and, uh, and hey, we and, got all the time in the world, man. Let's hear. It. <laughs> all right. Okay. Well, <clears throat> do you, do you know how the uh, the United States White House Situation Room was developed? I do not. You, you, of course, you know about the Situation Room. The, sure. The, 
Yeah, it's 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 the, the first price. rule about the situation. Really, <laughs> you don't talk about the situation. <laughs> I reckon I'm going to end up on some FBI watch list for all this <laughs> yeah. crap. Like, I talk how about. do you know all this military <laughs> stuff, Stuart? Yeah. I, I read I read too much Wikipedia. <laughs> like, I'm turning around to find out if Stuart's actually in my office right now. <laughs> yeah. I've, uh, I've implanted the nano chips. Uh, so <laughs> in, back in the '60s, when JFK was president. Uh, you guys were not happy with what the Russians were doing down in Cuba. And, right. Uh, yeah, quite, quite, you know, quite rightly, there was some missiles pointed at, at you guys yeah. in Florida. Not ideal. It was yeah. <laughs> not cool. Not, not conducive to mm. a fun time. <clears throat> and, uh, and so the decision was made. Let's, uh, uh, you know, CIA on the ground. Let's send in the Marines and let's, let's take out Cuba. Unfortunately, it was it was not one of the greatest moments of U.S. military power. It it was um, it was a time when a bunch of um, a, a bunch of Cubans uh, and and second third world kind of military grade handed the world's biggest military power a bit of a walloping. And um, and sorry to bring that up. Uh, <laughs> and uh, but um, after it all. When, when all the chaos had calmed down, JFK's president did the, did the right thing. He goes, right, we're going to launch an inquiry and investigation into why uh, we got our ass handed to us. Uh, oops, can I say that on, on the podcast? Oh, yeah. Uh, sure can. Great. All right. Now, the outcome of that investigation, that, that diagnosis, was one, the commander-in-chief was not getting information sent to him in a timely manner. Two, when information did come in, uh, it was biased. You know, the CIA were blaming the Navy and the Navy were blaming the Marines and the Marines were blaming the CIA and the Air Force were just kind of flapping their wings. You know, it was just, it was, it was just not good. Uh, and, and thirdly, um, there wasn't an effective way of getting commands back from the commander-in-chief to the relevant um, parts of of the military and the intelligence community um, based on the information coming in. So net net of all of that was we've got a problem. Uh, what are we going to do about it? And it was JFK that actually said, we're going to build a bunker. And uh, he commissioned the building of a bunker underneath the West Wing in the White House which became, and is still today, called the JFK Conference Room, which we all know as the White House Situation Room, which is where every, every uh, strategic operation that, that you guys run, domestic and international, is run from the White House Situation Room. It's, it's your strategic command centre. But this, it's, it's more than just having a room. You know, everybody's got a boardroom. But they did a couple of really interesting things. Uh, JFK said, right, um, we've got to solve the information problem. And so the Situation Room is actually staffed by an apolitical, so non-political member of every representative area of the government, military and non-military. And there's an information pipeline coming in to that Situation Room that is curated and managed by that representative. And so you have this unbiased free information flow of good or bad news coming into the situation room across military and non-military departments that that the commander-in-chief and cabinet and joint chiefs can actually process and execute back out in real time does that make sense um now you tell me a business that has that and i'll point you to a waymaker customer <laughs> um most businesses <laughs> did you like that did you like that little yeah, plug <laughs> i loved it <laughs> um, you know <laughs> you, you tell me a business that has that and they just don't exist what we have are boardrooms with you know egotistical maniacs sometimes that are coming in just to kind of shout their own view irrespective of what's going on in department you know it's oh you know bloody marketing they don't give us the right leads or sales they're just not closing the leads or product just make a better product you know it's it's that it's that lack of objective unbiased team thinking uh that's got to happen and actually you guys cracked it you guys cracked the code on that from a from a government perspective um through the development of that situation room and it's more than a room it's a method it's a process and so 
you know, it, it, as part of our journey, I'm reading these stories about JFK and the White House and the Situation Room and how you how you went from losing something to then becoming the greatest military powerhouse. And I'm reading about the British military trying to reinvent strategic planning operations on the battlefield. And it's like, right, um, the same problems exist in the business world. Uh, there's disruption everywhere. Digital disruption, flipping pandemic disruptions financial disruptions right. geopolitical disruptions you know you look back on the last 20 years and go when did we have five years of good stable business conditions no, never <laughs> never um, i was listening to a patrick lency only podcast the other day and he goes we're, we're not dealing with one business in america that has a plan greater than one year right now you know everybody is in reaction mode and and that's a really dangerous place to be if in your reactions you're not being strategic you're just being short-term minded and 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 i think there's some lessons to learn from history that we've got to turn into some cool software and some cool strategy processes put them in our playbooks and get that get back out there and, and flip and win the game make sense yeah absolutely <clears throat> i mean i'm i'm sitting here the entire time you're talking thinking about how much of a blast I could have with your brand and your voice from a marketing perspective. <laughs> like, I feel like that we could just dominate the world with Waymaker. I, I really do, man. All right. You're hired. Yeah, yeah, you know, the secret to my vo the secret to my voice today is it, it's like it's, it was like 530 a.m. when I joined this podcast. And, oh, uh, my goodness. and, and it was uh, so I haven't had my uh, haven't had my shot of coffee uh i and I'm, i've got that croaky sexy voice so i'm just gonna hold this I'm just everything i do from now on has got to you be know, at Stuart, like i couldn't put my finger on it until you just made, <laughs> now, now it makes a lot of sense <laughs> so, yeah <laughs> there you go guys it's you've awesome. got the best side of me uh well so, yeah go so on it's it's 5 30 in the morning what have we missed man i mean what do you want to get out about waymaker we haven't talked about you know, uh, that's just just a beautiful like softball question to lob up and knock out of the park. So number one, I'm trying. I'm uh, trying. Yeah, thanks, man. <laughs> like <laughs> you're awesome. It's like the best <laughs> podcast I've ever been on. Um, <laughs> the <laughs> the the number one thing, you know, we 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 work specifically with with business coaches and consultants, uh, and and the reason why coaches and consultants love us is they get a methodology they can take to their clients. They get a software that kind of does all the hard work um, in terms of data gathering and process for them. And our academy, Waymaker Academy, which is an online digital academy kind of sitting off the back of the app, um, has all the playbooks and frameworks and templates that you need to be a, a phenomenally powerful business advisor. So, uh, and we give that all to them at, at uh, 99 bucks a month you know typically you got to go and spend 20 30 40 50 grand uh, on a franchise or a lot big license to get those things and you know we're a tech company so we do the typical tech company thing we come in and we go no nah, you don't need to spend all that money uh you just you know not and that's that's 99 bucks australian which far out in this day and age like you, you could buy a small country with us dollars to australian conversions so, uh, so, so uh, you know, we, we, we bring that really small um, license fee for a really big value proposition because we, we want business coaches and consultants to become great certified way maker advisors and just do great things. Well, it sounds nice. to me like, you know, insurance and risk management advisors would also be great people for you to work through as we're going in and we're looking at our clients. I mean... Here's the deal, Stuart. You know, you don't know this because it would take me in a day and a half by plane just to come hang out with you over there where you're at. But at the end of the day, you know, if you're doing if we're doing our job right as insurance and risk management advisors, we're looking at the operations of these companies. And many times mm -hmm. they may have a process coach or something like that that they've engaged with. But looking at companies that we know are not operating efficiently from a risk management perspective would mean that it's low hanging fruit for somebody who could be one of your prospects and hopefully clients, right? Because Absolutely. anywhere they're missing efficiency in their business leads you to believe there are other places they're missing efficiency in their business. 
Yeah, 100%. If you deal with a business and you're helping that business remove risks and roadblocks uh, and and get clear on where they're going, how to get there, then then yeah, you'll you'll find the software valuable. Um, our little little mantra is we make business improvement business as usual. Nice. I like it. So I'm sitting here thinking to myself, this might be a little little something I could throw into our own value proposition that differentiates us to our clients when we go out. Love it. Hey, welcome. I'll send you the sign up link. <laughs> there you go. So talk th- talk about this though. I mean, obviously these are all going to be um, buying questions and the ones that you have. How does your price? Str- how is your pricing and everything structured? What does that What does that look like? Yeah, um, the business model is this: um, uh, coaches and consultants that use the software for um, for their business, we call them partners. You know, it's a classic technology partnership. Um, that's a ninety nine dollar uh, a month license, and then there's a, a small training fee that we do um, at the start to onboard you, train you, teach you how to use all the toolkits and stuff. Then the the business users, so they they would be clients of coaches and consultants. Um, they pay um, they pay a license uh, themselves. Uh, it's a classic SaaS model, so a, a user license per month, and that. Uh, there's three types there's $49 a month which is what we call our full diagnostic and kind of everything in the platform that's that's the full full kit then we have one for $29 a month a month which is designed for um, startups and and much smaller businesses it's it's a it's a much shorter diagnostic and just focuses on kind of the top 30 big rocks in your business and then we have an entry level or a frontline license we call goals which is everything in the platform except the diagnostic, but it lets you do your strategic roadmap, your goal management, and your task boards and your dashboards. So, you know, it, it's all about what am I doing, where am I going? It's it's the execution piece. Uh, see, the thing that um, there's lots of software out there at the moment that is maybe an OKR or goal software. Um, uh, lots of software out at the moment that could be like a okay, build your strategy or your business plan online. And there's lots of survey software. We've, we've, we've kind of drawn a line horizontally across those three swim lanes and said, you know, if you do this, you'll, you'll, you'll get the best of all of those worlds. So in your business, you might, you, you know, your leadership team and, and a few others might need the diagnostic tool. And then the other team members may just need the execution, the goal license. So nine bucks a month for your goals, 29 for startup small business version and 49 for business. Does that make sense from a pricing point of view? Yep, it does. Mm. Very simple then, and just scale up, scale down as you grow. Cool. Absolutely. Good deal. Well, listen, I don't want to keep you anymore. You can probably go get your shot of coffee at this point. I mean, we have we have shaken this thing down, you know, as best we can to this point, but I think that there's actually an opportunity for consultative agents to look at your product and use is they're going in to diagnose issues with business processes that would lead to a much more in-depth discussion with their prospects outside of the simple, hey, let me sell you an insurance policy conversation. The pricing yeah. is certainly in line with what yeah. I would expect, if not better than what I would expect. And, you know, at the end of the day, we got to constantly keep reinventing ourselves. You know, we're in an archaic industry, man. The insurance industry is like trying to turn a cruise ship around. It just <laughs> doesn't happen, right? So yeah. I really enjoy everything that we heard today. And I'm I'm going to head over and send me over, I mean, any info you've got. But I'm going to jump on your site and check it out and consume as much of that information as I can. And we'll be in touch shortly. Yeah, fantastic, guys. Thanks for doing that. Um Head, head as well to waymaker.io slash partner. That's got all the information for coaches, consultants around our partner program. Um, and hey, I'll drop you some links, um, but all the links that you need are in that partner um, location. And hey, it'd be great, great to talk to you, great to talk to um, uh, anybody in that space of helping a business build a better business. That's what we do. But and it's been yeah, a true absolutely. pleasure. Absolutely. Mm, and give true. me those links i'll put them in the show notes when we publish yeah fantastic um kyle david it's been awesome talking awesome talking to you guys today likewise uh, man thanks for coming on yeah pleasure to be here thank you thanks thanks for giving waymaker such a good plug 
hey, we had a blast, man. You definitely were one of my favorite guests we've ever had. Seri it was all sincerity. Awesome. You kept it light. We laughed. You know, we're talking about boring insurance crap all the time, man. Right. <laughs> insurance technology is okay, good to mix it up. But yeah, absolutely. Really had <coughs> really enjoyed having you on. Everybody else that's been listening to this, we will catch you next time. See ya. You've been listening to the Power Producers Podcast. You can follow Killing Commercial Insurance on Facebook and YouTube. And if you want to take your game to the next level, next level, check out our book, The Extra Two Minutes, and our website, killingcommercial.com.